We're starting with the clover leaf exercise. This is a first year horse and we're trying to teach him a little bit more about his balance and a little bit of jump and turn and balance to the turn. We're trying to, we're trying to make him land on both leads. So we're gonna start off turning left. And you can set this clover leaf anywhere. Um, you can set the jumps a little further apart to make it a little less advanced or a little less technical. Um, you can set them lower. Lower and further apart is going to be easier. Um, these are pretty close together, so it's, it's tightening up the clover leaf a bit. Um, you can set it in the center of the ring where you have more room. Obviously here with the jumps all involved, it makes it a little bit tighter. You can always go around the jumps if you need to to start. And sometimes with the younger kids, we'll do it with holes on the ground just so they start to get the pattern. It's a lot of steering, it's a lot of organizing. You can use it for a lot of different things for horses and rider. And this horse, we're trying to get him to kind of load up on the last stride. Um, he's ridden by a young girl and we're trying to also teach him that it's okay to get a little deep, it's okay to chip, it's okay to get yourself out of trouble. It doesn't really matter so much about the distance. What matters is that he studies the jump and he backs up and he jumps around it with balance and lands with balance. So now we're working the left lead. Some of the turns you can see are harder than others just by the way the exercise is set up. This turn he had to come around the barrels. That turn is a little shorter going into the end of the ring. The barrels are new, sometimes they spook at the barrels. We're starting to show them some new things and let them deal with some stuff outside of the ring. And you'll see as he goes, and he knows he's going left each time, he starts to follow and he starts to go into the corner and his balance comes up a bit. So he actually gets a bit more rideable each time. We're not pull, yeah, that was better. We're not pulling him to ask him to land on the lead. We're just sort of encouraging and allowing it and creating the opportunity for it. But we're, you'll see he's not pulling him in the air to one side or the other. So I think we're good on the left. This week, this week we, uh, things are more challenging. They should be more challenging than they're actually gonna see in their first few weeks of competition. Then we put the pieces back together. We see what we have this week. We have to know what we're trying to accomplish. We don't just work up and hope. We actually get to the finish and then work backwards a little bit. The last two weeks before we compete. And it's okay if it unravels a little bit, then we know what we need to do. We know what we're dealing with and we know what we need to work on. So we're actually pushing it a little bit right now. Right lead? Right lead. Okay. Unrehearsed. Unrehearsed on the right lead. Could be interesting. We find in general that uh, the horses have one preferred side and it seems a lot of horses seem to like the left better. I think that's because a lot of people like the left better. Here we go on the right lead. He's not really looking for the jump as much until he knows where he's going. He's gonna probably be thinking he's turning left a couple of these times since that's what we just did. So it takes him a few times and the first times might be, might be a little rough or a little ratty there he got deep, which is actually one of the things we're trying to teach this horse to be, to be comfortable getting deep and to back up and stay balanced as he gets deep. There he over jumped a little bit, which is fine. He studies the jumps a bit, but the more we go, the more we hope that it will level out. That's it. He lands left, gets a little stuck in the corner but we don't make a big deal out of anything. What we do is if, if something happens that's not planned or if something happens that's a quote mistake, we go forward and we keep it positive. We continue, we don't dwell on it. We don't make a big deal out of it. Everything is positive in a way and we just continue. We're gonna let him take a break for a second and just let that sink in and then we'll do it once more on the right. The other thing about the end of the ring is where the, you'll see where those barrels are stacked. We use the end of the ring a little bit to get the horse to learn to back up. So we want him to look at those barrels. It's going to teach him as he goes into the end of the ring that he is meant to back up. His balance is going to come up and he's, he's going to start to balance on his own. 
It's also a great exercise for a horse that you're thinking about changing leads with or a horse that has trouble changing leads. You want them to look to the end of the ring or land from the jump and think, balance up, collect, so that you're not having to, to wrestle with them too much. You want them to help you with that. Letting him know he did well. This is a really smart horse. It's a really sharp horse. He really studies. So we don't do it too many times with him because he almost gets to trying a little bit too hard. There he finished really well. He's starting to follow and know that he's going right. Yeah, here he gives him just a little bit more room because you don't want him to land and start to cut in. That's not the exercise. The lead is not the most important thing. It's the balance and the symmetry and the turning both ways that's much more important than whatever lead you land on. This horse is a great lead changer, so we don't, we don't really worry too much about what lead he lands on. We want him to be comfortable on both and comfortable to jump a beautiful jump no matter what lead he lands on. Nice. Yeah, good. I think one of, the, one of the things that's good to note too is if your horse is a little fresh, that's okay. It doesn't have to look perfect. The exercise, all the exercises that we do at home are not about looking perfect. They're about looking for a specific result or trying to explain something specifically to the horse. But we don't, we don't train the horses to be super quiet all the time. I mean, it's nice if they are, but we don't get them quiet to do these exercises. Actually, a lot of them are easier to do and work better if the horses are a little fresh. So we don't worry about that at home. At the horse show, of course, they're gonna be a little more prepared and they're gonna be a little quieter. At home, that's not a concern.